In this lesson, we'll be discussing ATP production. The question reads, as Natalie is walking on the treadmill during her fitness test, how many ATP are produced during each of the following oxidations? Starting with A, we have 2 pyruvate to 2 acetyl CoA. After glycolysis, which converts glucose into two pyruvate molecules, pyruvate then moves into the mitochondrion, as shown in this illustration. In this process, each pyruvate is converted into an acetyl CoA molecule. From this illustration, we can tell that two NAD plus molecules are reduced into NADH. And what you'll need to know to answer this question is that downstream NADH forms 2.5 ATP molecules. Some textbooks have 2.5, whereas other literature has 3. So we'll assume that for every NADH molecule, 2.5 ATPs are formed. So if two pyruvate molecules form two acetyl-CoA molecules, we can multiply 2.5 by the two pyruvate molecules. And that means 5 ATPs will be formed in this process. In part B, 1 glucose to 2 acetyl-CoA. So we assume that the first stage is glycolysis in energy production. And in glycolysis, four ATPs are made. But because two are required to activate glucose at the very beginning, only a net of two ATP molecules are made in glycolysis and two pyruvate molecules. Remember that. So, so far we have two ATPs made and two pyruvate molecules, which then are converted into two acetyl-CoA. Using the calculation from part A, we can say 5 plus 2 is 7, 7 ATP. One other thing that you don't want to miss is that not only are ATPs formed from glycolysis, but also NADH molecules. So two NAD plus molecules are reduced to two NADH. So we can multiply that now by 2.5, which is 5. 5 plus 7 means that 12 total ATP molecules are formed, and that's the answer for B. Question C, what are the sources of ATP for two terms of the citric acid cycle? Let's take a look at the citric acid cycle. Here we have a thorough illustration of the citric acid cycle, and what gets fed into it is acetyl-CoA. For simplicity's sake, we can say that this is stage two in cellular respiration. From here, we have one NADH in this stage formed, another one here, and a third one here. So three NADH, that's in one spin, and one FADH, sub two molecule. Remember that NADH produces 2.5 ATPs, and FADH2 produces 1.5 ATP. Some textbooks, once again, have 2 as opposed to 1.5. We'll be using 1.5 and 2.5. I'll multiply this by 2 because we have two spins. So 6 NADH and 2 FADH2. If we multiply this by 2.5, we end up with 15. And if we multiply this by 1.5, we get 3. Adding this up, that's 18 ATP. One last thing to keep in mind, and it's not shown here, is that over here we have GDP forming GTP. The phosphate from GTP goes on to phosphorylate ADP to become ATP. And because this is happening twice, two cycles, we multiply this by two and we will add another two ATP to this, forming 20 total, theoretically. And there you have it, a quick discussion on ATP production.